Hello and welcome. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for returning for another segment of Health Professional Radio. We'll be speaking with returning guest, Dr. Derek Wallace. He's joining us here as Vice President and Global Dengue Program Head at Takeda. He's going to talk about the dengue program and the European Commission approval of the company's dengue vaccine, Qdenga, for the prevention of dengue disease caused by any serotype in individuals from four years of age in the European Union. Welcome back, Derek. How have you been? Uh, thanks very much, Neil. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here, and uh, I'm very well, thanks. Well, remind our listeners about uh, your professional background uh, and uh, your current role at Takeda. Uh, my professional background is that I'm medically trained, uh, and I'm currently working as the program lead for Takeda's dengue vaccine candidate to dengue. Now, you've worked in dengue vaccine development for, for quite a while. Uh, tell us more about dengue and your experience with vaccine development for this condition. Uh, dengue is actually the most common uh, viral uh, vector-borne disease. Uh, it's one of the top 10 global public health threats, according to the World Health Organization, and that's because it's a growing problem. Uh, it actually affects uh, eight times more uh, people now than it did 20 years ago, and the spread of dengue is, uh, is, is relentless with uh, global warming, um, urbanization, and, and globalization all contributing to the spread of the, the, the mosquito vector that, that spreads dengue. Um, so dengue is a, a big problem for, for many parts of the world. Uh, my personal uh, exposure to it uh, was, was actually in Thailand uh, almost exactly 15 years ago. And I visited a, a provincial hospital in the north of Thailand that, um, that had an ongoing dengue outbreak. And, and I'll never forget the, the palpable anxiety that I, that I saw not just in the sick children and, and their parents, but, but also in the healthcare professionals. And I think one of the things that's you know, probably not well understood about dengue is that although most infections are a, a sort of simple fever, a small proportion of people will go on to critical plasma leakage. And, and it's this transition from you know, a sick, un, un, unwell child to a child who's, who's really on, on, the, on the brink of death. And, and that balances is really fluid balance. So you know, the, the plasma leakage can, can lead to respiratory distress uh, and also cardiac insufficiency. And, and getting that balance right is something that happens over just a few hours uh, in a minority of people who are hospitalized. Um, so that creates a lot of, a lot of anxiety, and I'll, I'll never forget that situation. You mentioned mosquitoes. Are they the only carriers of this virus, or are there other ways to contract it? Is it uh, contagious from person to person? Uh, how exactly is it spreading so rapidly? Uh, it, it's, it's all down to mosquitoes. Um, so this virus is, is uh, um, a mosquito can get the virus from somebody, a human who has dengue, or in fact a non-human primate who has dengue, uh, and then spread that to, to other humans through, through mosquito bites. Um, the mosquito itself is different to the mosquito that spreads malaria, and some of those differences help to explain the, the spread of dengue. Um, firstly, these are nervous feeders. Um, so the mosquito uh, Aedes albopictus is um, an Aedes aegypti um, tend to tend to feed on multiple uh, humans. Um, so they're, they're actually very efficient uh, spreaders of, of dengue. Let's talk about Qdenga. How is it different from other available options out there for dengue? Well, the, the the historical uh, attempt to, to control dengue is really about vector control, so controlling the mosquito population. And I think we can say that with the continued spread of dengue, this, this historically has not been enough. Um, there are some novel ap approaches to vector control, and um, I hope that these become really important uh, uh, tools in, in dengue management. But I think vaccines are, uh, are also a very important tool for, for dengue control. Um, there is a vaccine available at the moment, um, but this can only be used in people who had before, uh, which requires some, some testing of, of that fact prior to admission, uh, administration of the vaccine. Um, our vaccine actually can be used irrespective of previous exposure to dengue, which is a, a huge step forward. Uh, and we think that the, the fact that is possible is, is because of the, the makeup of the vaccine. Um, our vaccine is based upon a, a dengue virus. Uh, and that gives a, a, um, a very uh, broad immune response that is that is clearly protective in um, in in, uh, in in, in um, 
you know, following administration. You mentioned that you were in Thailand. It was experiencing an ongoing dengue outbreak. I'm assuming that hasn't slowed down in the last decade or so. Does Europe have the same problem? You said it was a global health risk. The European Union doesn't seem to have a continuous circulation of dengue. Why is the vaccine needed there so desperately? Well, there are different circumstances in, in Europe. Um, there are endemic uh, settings in Europe, uh, particularly some of the overseas territories of places like France are endemic for dengue. Um, part of the spread of dengue that I mentioned earlier is, is to places like southern Europe. Um, so there have been local transmission of dengue in places like Portugal and Spain. Um, remember, if the, uh, if the mosquito vector is present, then all you need is somebody who has dengue who's traveled somewhere and comes back with dengue, they, they can lead to a local transmission. And, and we've seen that in Europe, but we've also seen it in Australia, in, in Japan, um, in southern parts of the U.S. as well. Um, so I think that the, 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 the future spread of dengue will involve parts of Europe. Um, but I think the principal benefit for, for most Europeans is protection when they travel. Uh, dengue is one of the most common causes of fever in, in, in travelers returning from parts of Asia and, and Central America. You talked about entire families being affected by dengue. Is Qdenga effective in both children and adults? Yes, we have a very comprehensive program uh, to, to look at how the vaccine is working from a safety and efficacy perspective. Uh, and we've involved in, in, uh, studied the vaccine in children as young as 18 months and, and adults. As, um, the vaccine is, is indicated for use in, in anyone from the age of four and above. Uh, and that's because of the protection that we've shown, as well as the similarity in the immune response across the age range. What's next for Takeda's dengue program? Well, this is a really exciting time for us, Neil. Uh, as, as we've spoken over the last you know, couple of times, we've we've had some some really important milestones. With uh, firstly long-term follow-up, so we have four and a half years of data on our vaccine, which is uh, I believe unprecedented for a vaccine at this stage. Um, we've had approval in Indonesia in the summer, uh, in, in August of, of last year, and then approval of of the vaccine in Europe, uh, which we're discussing now. Um, we are expecting additional approvals. Um, the vaccine is certainly under review in a number of different countries, uh, other countries in Asia like Thailand, uh, Singapore, uh, countries in Latin America like Brazil. Uh, and we've also submitted into the U.S. FDA. Um, we submitted it, uh, and had an uh, acknowledgement of that submission in November of 2022. Um, and uh, the FDA has granted us priority review for that, uh, for that review. Um, so very exciting time for us now as we as we look forward to making this vaccine available for as many people who are afflicted by dengue as possible. Well, give us a website where our listeners can learn more, Derek. Uh, we actually have a website which is uh, provi- which provides information on dengue and it's geared towards healthcare professionals. Uh, it's called dengueacademy.com. Well, as always, a pleasure speaking with you. And I do believe that there's another website, uh, TakedaVaccines.com as well. That's correct. That's a, a more than general website. Well, Derek, as I said, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for returning. Looking forward to our next conversation as uh, the dengue program progresses. That's great. Thanks very much, Neil. Always a pleasure. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with returning guest, Dr. Derek Wallace. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at Anchor Spotify, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel on youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.